Breaking news on the eve of Major League Baseball. Mookie Betts is close to signing a mega extension with the Dodgers, according to our Jim Bowden. It's a team he has yet to play a single regular season game for, though he has played some uh, exhibition games in Dodger Blue. He's the 2018 AL MVP, four-time All-Star, traded by the Red Sox in February as he was heading into the final year of his contract. And he's expected to become the second highest paid player in the game behind Mike Trout. And Mike Trout might be the only player that's better than him in Major League Baseball at this point. So let's get the very latest from Jim Bowden. Jim, what, what do we know at this point as it pertains to a deal that you're reporting is going to be done soon? Yeah, I'm being told by my sources the deal is going to get done. Um, they've agreed on the years and the dollars. There is a lot of complicated language that they're working on, so we got to wait until the Dodgers and Mookie Betts makes the announcements officially. I was told the deal will be under Mike Trout's, but that he will become the second highest paid player in the history of Major League Baseball. You know, it was interesting. A week ago, I was talking with Andrew Friedman, the president and GM of the Dodgers, and I asked him when he was going to get the extension done with Betts, and he said to me that he keeps hitting his refresh button on his computer. I thought he was kidding. Obviously, he's not. Uh, this thing is getting done, and it's exciting for the Dodgers. They made the big deal in the offseason, and it would have been really disappointing to acquire bets for just 60 games and then watch them walk somewhere else. But this is a big commitment for the Dodgers, and it also shows you the confidence that the Dodgers have that Major League Baseball will rebound from the pandemic and that economically uh, the game will get back to being in a strong position. And to be able to have Mookie Betts and Cody Bellinger together for the next several years, two MVP candidates that both can do everything on the baseball field, certainly a great sign for the future of Dodgers baseball. Yeah, we talked to the director of trading at William Hill earlier in the day, and he said the most money right now, the most confidence in, uh, is on the Dodgers in the public to win the World Series. They've won seven straight division titles. They keep getting to the World Series. It's time to win it, and the time is now. How about the Red Sox? I mean, if you're the Red Sox brass, there were some in, in, in Boston that hoped he'd play one season in L.A. and then return long-term to the Red Sox. How is Boston feeling all about this? Well, they're going to be obviously very disappointed. Um, the Red Sox did make an offer to him of at least $300 million, which he turned down. And it was very evident while they were trying to extend him while he was a member of the Red Sox, it was very evident to the front office and to ownership that it took two to dance. And Mookie Betts didn't want to dance with them. He never really countered. He never really negotiated. It was very clear that he wanted to spend his career in a different place. And certainly now we know he's found a home in Los Angeles. So you're reporting that the deal is going to be second only to Mike Trout in Major League Baseball history as, as far as value. This is a guy that won AL Most Valuable Player two seasons ago. Even last year in a down year for the Red Sox, he led the majors in runs scored. Where does he rank on your list of top players in the league at this point? Well, he's a top five player in baseball. I mean, there's no question about it. I think, you know, Mike Trout obviously is the best player of this generation. But the next group of players, Mookie Betts, Christian Yelich, Cody Bellinger, Ronald Acuna, Francisco Lindor, that's the group right now that uh, are, are the best in the sport. And he'll be an MVP candidate with Yelich and Bellinger and Acuna for years to come. He's young. He's in his prime. And there's nothing he can't do on the field. He's a gold glove defender and right. Great angles, great jump has a great arm, can prevent you from getting to the next base, hits for average, hits for power, can steal bases, and oh, by the way, he can bowl 300, he's a scratch golfer, uh, there's really not much he can do, and he certainly found a home in L.A., and that's why he was very aggressive in working with the Dodgers to get this worked out, uh, and I think it's going to be a really, really good spot for him long term. You mentioned it briefly, in that, that some people thought this, these are trying times, maybe we're not going to see these these mega deals. What does this tell you about what the market is right now and what it's going to be in the upcoming offseason? Well, as we, as we said here on CBS Sports HQ over and over again when those questions are brought up, we said the star players are still going to get paid. So the signing of bets, certainly, I think, good sign for JT Realmuto of the Phillies. He's probably next. This deal probably puts some pressure on the Phillies now to turn around and continue to work on that deal. But I do think the pandemic is going to affect 
the middle free agents, the lower end free agents. I think those guys are going to pay a price, but I think the star players are going to get their money. They're going to get paid, and certainly the Mookie Betts contract will prove that. All right. It's close. Jim Bowden reporting it's going to be the second highest contract in Major League Baseball history behind only Mike Trout. We wait and see what the numbers and the years are going to look like, but Mookie Betts is going to sign long-term with the Dodgers. Our thanks to Jim Bowden. We get to see Mookie Betts in his very first regular season game for the Dodgers tomorrow night on opening night. It's the second game of the doubleheader following Yankees Nationals. The Dodgers hosting the Giants at just after 10 Eastern time. Up next, we get David Sampson in here, and, and he's not as happy as some might think. Bit surprised that the Dodgers are spending so much capital on Mookie Betts. Let's bring in David Sampson, host of Nothing Personal with David Sampson, the uh, uber-successful podcast. David, I, I saw you tweet moments ago that this is a panic buy from the Dodgers. Why do you feel that way? I just don't understand why they would make a decision to finish an extension right now. I'm thinking back to my time in the front office, and there's no question that you feel pressure. You see what's going on in the media. You don't want to be the one who traded for Mookie Betts, had him for 60 games, and then he walks away. You know the makeup of your roster and the thought, the dream of having Bellinger and Betts together for years to come. Maybe Bueller, you can sign him long term while watching a bunch of other players basically fall off the roster. I get all of that. What I don't understand is on the eve of the regular season, unless you're ready to announce and it's all finished, why are you doing it? That's in a regular, regular season. This is not regular. People are saying that the best free agents are going to get paid. The top guys are going to get their money. Says who? Why is that the case? Why don't we see where the economics are? Why don't we see where the world is? I'm not saying the Dodgers shouldn't re-sign Mookie Betts. I'm not saying he's not one of the top five players in baseball. What I'm saying is, let's see where the market is and then decide. But the Dodgers thought, nah, we'll do it right now. So you're saying uh, that you would have waited maybe through the season to hear what the other offers might be for Mookie Betts, not negotiate against yourself, but negotiate against some other teams? Not, well, not just negotiate against other teams, but I want to see where the world is. It's such a changing world right now with COVID-19. We just don't know what's happening. We're about to start a 60-game season. We don't know whether or not it's going to finish. We don't know when fans are going to be back. So there will be revenue. The teams are going to be okay. But realistically, there is going to be an adjustment in player salaries because industry revenue will be down. That means that people at the top should take a haircut. When I'm putting a team together, I have to look at my overall payroll. If I'm allocating $35 million to Mookie Betts in a particular year, that means I better have a payroll, a cash payroll of $200 million so I can guarantee that I've got depth because the reason the Dodgers are so good is they've got depth. That's the key. But you put up the graphic here, Chris, and it's a great one. They haven't won a World Series in 31 seasons. Winning the NL West seven years in a row, who cares? You want rings, and they're desperate to get them. It's a panic buy at a panic time. And that's my story, Chris, and I'm sticking to it. Does this, in your opinion, put even more pressure on the Dodgers to end that drought? No, they've had the same pressure for years before Mookie got there. He's walking into a pressure cooker because they haven't been able to do it. Of course, they can say it's because the Astros were stealing signs or banging trash cans or whatever excuse they can make. The fact is they just haven't won a World Series. They've been tremendously successful. Andrew Friedman is terrific. Keep in mind, Andrew Friedman, their president of baseball operations, gets to continue his record-setting stat never having signed a free agent for more than 55 or $60 million because Mookie Betts is an extension, not a free agent signing. Where do the Dodgers stand in your mind this season? Are they the team to beat not only in the National League but in Major League Baseball? Well, if you look at what is necessary to compete in a 60-game sprint where you don't know when your players are going to get sick, you know, just now a Royals, uh, Dozier, I believe is his name, Chris, it just happened before we went on the air, tested positive for COVID after getting three at-bats in last night's game. So any team that has depth is going to have the best chance to win over the long term of this 60-game season. But the other problem is such a high variable rate of the unexpected. You're hearing a lot about that. And in baseball, when you take a 60-game stretch, 
You just don't know what can happen. I don't see the Dodgers having a problem making the playoffs. That would be an extraordinary event for them to miss it. And then, as you know, once you're in the playoffs, you need a lot to go right to win the ring. When you were in the Florida Marlins front office, the then Florida Marlins, now Miami, obviously, I mean, there were some guys that, that, that got away, that went away, that went for more money elsewhere. Put yourself in the Red Sox front office. I, I know you traded him away, but I, I'm sure they were hoping that they were going to be able to get him back after this year. Oh, it feels badly. So when you trade away a player and then that player signs an extension with the team that you traded him to, it hurts. I remember even when Cabrera signed his extension because you have this thought that maybe he'll come back to Florida or maybe we'll find a way or you just want that feeling of having that guy back who helped you win a World Series, was an MVP. And the Red Sox have been very clear that they want to stay under the luxury tax and they're smart to do so. And they're doing the best they can. By the way, they've won a bunch of rings. If any Red Sox fan right now is angry I really take issue with that because the Red Sox owners the Red Sox front office it's been quite a run for that team in the past 15 years nothing to feel badly about at all yeah you can be sad certainly can't be angry at Mookie Betts I mean he was traded away Red Sox didn't give him what he wanted now he has gotten what he what he wanted David Sampson uh, looking forward to listening to nothing personal later on today as he'll uh, discuss more as to why he's surprised the Dodgers went out right now and paid Mookie Betts. It's not a done deal as of yet, but it is going to get done soon, according to our Jimbo. Nothing personal with David Sampson. Find it uh, anywhere you download your podcast and also in video form on YouTube. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.